Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching another one of my interviews with me, William Wallace, my show, William Wallace for America. With me today, you already see it, seated next to me is the Speaker of the Louisiana House of Legislature, Clay Schneckschneider. Clay, how you thank doing, you. William? Dave, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I am fantastic, fantastic. Looking forward to a good session. I'm, I'm here and it's exciting, and, and, and if I'm talking to you before we got on camera, it sounds like it's going to be not only exciting, but very informative and interesting for the people of Louisiana. So I hope they get to share this video today. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. You know, this is going to be a big session. We have a lot of things to still accomplish. The last three years, we've, we've had goals that we've set by ourselves, and we were able to accomplish all of those goals. So this year, we have one more set of goals that we want to hit on, and, and hopefully we can get there and reach that threshold that we want. Well, we're going to talk about your legislation in a minute, the legislation that you support, but talking about those goals, does a supermajority help you? There's a lot of talk about this new supermajority, and I'd like for you to share what your thoughts are on that. Well, and look, it's, it's great to see those numbers climbing on that side, but what we have to realize is, and, and a lot of this is, a lot of these people that we have at the legislature represent and were elected as Republican or Democrat, right? Mm -hmm. Their district may be situated a little bit different. There may be bills in there that I can vote on and support that another, another legislator can't support because his district is made up of a little different mm -hmm. culture or people. So we have to be really careful when we look at supermajority. Uh, Baton Rouge is much, much different than D.C. You're not going to see uh, a lot of people just vote party line. They're going to work with each other. Mm -hmm. They're going to vote across the lines. They're going to want to have good policy. Look, I say it all the time, and I was at a good friend of mine's prayer breakfast the other day, and I told him, I said, look, there's a lot of things out there that we are all different on, whether you're Republican or Democrat. And the things that we agree on, you're going to see – everybody and I think we've done a good job with that in the legislature you're gonna see everybody vote for things who who wants lower insurance right right I, yeah. think, I, think, I, think, I think we all do I think everybody does I think it doesn't matter whether you're Republican or Democrat That's everybody right. wants lower insurance who, who wants who wants a, a, a better uh, uh, jobs in the state right who wants who wants higher paying jobs in the state I think everybody does who wants better education I think everybody does so there's a lot of things that we're gonna all agree on but there's some things that you're going to see small pieces that you're not going to agree on, but we still have to work together. So Exactly. The numbers look good. It looks really good. But I think you're going to have a lot of people that are still going to just be who they are. Right. And they're going to work to strive to make things happen. But they have to, the first thing I tell them, represent your district. That's yeah. the most important thing. I would, and I like the fact that not only it's about representing the district, but you've also mentioned that, that sometimes it doesn't matter about party or where the district you're from. It matters about the policy and that's bringing right. people together, and I respect that, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I appreciate you know, that. That's, that's really important. When you look at the first year, when you look at, you know, when we set our goals, the first year we looked at talk reform. Whether you were a Republican or Democrat, whether you lived in New Orleans or Ruston, you, you wanted that talk reform. Mm -hmm. People wanted it. Now, they may have wanted it in a different fashion, but we found a way to work with both sides and to work with a Democrat governor to be able to pass tort reform. Second year was tax reform. We haven't passed any form of tax reform in our state in over 40 years. We were able to pass six bills to send to the voters to vote on. Now, we did that, and unfortunately, we only had the voters get out and pass one of them. That's okay. We, we, we are educating people in those uh, uh, tax reform issues that make our state more competitive, that make us more uh, lookable or likable for companies to want to come here. So we had the conversation started. We heard nothing but positive. And then last year was manufacturing. We looked at manufacturing and why we don't have more manufacturing here. We passed a series of bills last year both the Republican and Democrat working together to solve problems for our state as a whole. So we're, we're there. We, we're, we're right there. You know what I said? So you said something that I like that I want to highlight, uh, that lookable and likable. And what I think is we're, we're in a cycle in Louisiana where more people are getting involved, more people are paying attention. And more legislators are now being more vocal and working with the public more. And it's becoming more noticeable. So maybe in this cycle, we can make some more positive changes. Absolutely. I, I believe this. I believe we all have a lot of common thread in us. And I believe if you bring a group of people, 
no matter how different they are from one side or the other. You bring them to a table, you can find a path forward that is successful for the state of Louisiana. And as we talk about your legislation, the legislation that you support, we're going to talk about how you are weaving that thread through the fabric of uh, the legislators here in, here in Louisiana. So what, what legislation do you have that you're going to bring forward this year? So look, over the last, from last session to this one, I think the, one of the big things I've heard out there was crime. How are we going to fix crime? And look, there's several ways we can look at trying to fix crime. We can look at harsher penalties. We can look at um, uh, easier ways to go out and enforce laws that are on the books already. But look, I think there's, there's a lot of things that we can do uh, just in general in educating. When you look at educating young people, you look at educating people, everybody out there right now has an opportunity to be educated. I think we all agree on that. The part is, is how successful can we be when that environment that that young person is growing up in is a, a violent area or a uh, low income area or even even a, a rich area, mm -hmm. right? How do we how do we get that together? So. You look at it and you say, okay, well, we have these young people that we're putting in uh, detentions and jails and things like that, and we're not educating them inside of that. Mm -hmm. These young people are going in, and whether it's whether it's uh, theft or whether it's drugs or whatever it is, when we let them out, they're going back and doing the same thing. That's all they know. Because that's all they know to survive, right? And what, what we're going to look at is some pieces of legislation that's going to go in and change that. And look, we have one of the best technical college programs in the country. We always hear about people talking about how bad we are. Exactly. Things. We are good and great in a lot of things. One of them is our technical colleges. We have a tech, technical college program that is huge across the country compared to others that really do educate and get our young people ready to go to work in good paying jobs, excellent jobs. Uh, Dr. Monty Sullivan has been uh, courted from other states to come and revamp their college programs. He chose to stay right here because he is making a difference and he's making a huge difference. And uh, I think we can help him in that fact in helping him educate these people who do get incarcerated and have them come out, have a trade where they can go to work in the plants or they can go to work being a equipment operator or they can go over work being a welder whatever it is pick one he has the tools that we need to utilize he has the programs that we need to utilize so we have a bill that's going to address that i think that's going to be a huge bill it's i like the proactive approach yes because all too often everybody thinks the best way to fight crime is to make the penalties stiffer harder harsher longer but like you said our justice system when people get out and they, when they when they've committed a hard harsh crime, they're in there for a long, for the max amount of time, but they're still getting out in their lifetime, in our lifetime, they're going to be repeat offenders. I like the proactive Absolutely. approach. Look, I, you, you can't, you can never go wrong by investing in young people, and you can never go wrong by wanting to make somebody's life better. We looked at, we looked at incarcerated uh, people across the country and states and seeing which ones had the best programs. Tennessee has the best program in workforce putting young people get in trouble, putting them into the, I call it the, uh, the uh, tax paying mm -hmm. area of being good citizens, right? That's what we need to do. Tennessee is Tennessee on the move. We need to take that and utilize it. And, you know, it's funny when last year when we passed those manufacturing bills, I went and met with states who were doing really well. Mm -hmm. I went to Tennessee and asked them, I said, how do y'all have the best workforce investment program in the country? And he asked me, he said, Clay, did you look at our legislation? And I said, no, I didn't. He said, it's y'all's legislation. <laughs> it's y'all's. And I was blown away. And when he got me a copy and we looked at it, it was. He changed two words in the whole thing. One was made a shall, which is very important right, in legislation. Right, exactly. Theirs said they shall train those young people. So ours said we may. Okay. Right? The other was... We have a program that's set up in the, in the correction system that says we're going to train them in there. He said, why would we want to create a whole nother school for our program when we have a great technical college? Guess what? We have we, one Exactly. Too. Let's utilize that. 
let's utilize that correction system to have young people there that qualify to be in this program. Let our technical colleges do what they do, and that's train people and educate people. I love this. It's, 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 something, it's something that's already in place. It's something that can help not only our, you know, the, the, the people, our trained workforce, but the people coming, coming out into the and look, workforce. That's, that's, you know, our technical colleges is one of the great things that we look at. And I always say this, when you look across the country and you look at other states, how well they're doing, and, and you, you hear all these statistics, how bad Louisiana is. Look, our technical college is great. We need to utilize it more. And the other thing is, when you look across this country, the top five states that have women-owned businesses that are successful in the country. Louisiana is third on that list. I love this. That's, We're moving up. We, look, there's only two states ahead of us. That's oh. Georgia and Florida. Yes. We're right there and we're ahead. And they're bigger than us. That's right. Look, we have people in this state that are willing to step up to the plate to do the right thing. And whether it's our correction systems and getting the education put on young people that need to be... Uh, educated or whether it's women based on businesses that are out there that are doing things mm -hmm. a little bit different than everybody else but they're getting it done right and people across the country are seeing this and what i like about this before i ask my next question for you about your next piece of legislation you you mentioned about the other states around us everybody likes to say well if we can model ourselves after texas or mississippi or florida it sounds to me like from what you just now told me that we've had a lot of really good things in place in years gone by Maybe some legislation, legislative bodies got, I don't want to say lazy, but maybe, you know, we, as a people, the state became too passive and we didn't, and we didn't upgrade. We didn't, we didn't do the reset upgrade, you know, as, as, you know, standards change and technology changes. We didn't move the times and now it sounds like this legislative body is interested in correcting that and upgrading so that way we can catch up with those other states. Listen, we all pass great pieces of legislation up there. And when I say great, every legislator up there who brings a piece of legislation spends time, lots of time, mm -hmm. with staff going through all of this, trying to figure out what's the best thing for Louisiana. They listen to their constituents mm -hmm. back home and their districts back home, and they come with a good piece of legislation. But lots of times when you look at that good piece of legislation, once you actually get it in place, there's things, it's, it's like a race car, right? You can put it on a track and it runs really well, but can it run better? <laughs> Absolutely. So let's do a tune-up on it. Let's adjust the air pressure in the tires. Let's get a, 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 yeah. a bigger carburetor for it. Let's fix it so that it runs and performs at the top peak. And we may have to go back and tweak legislation or tune it up, but uh, I think we, we have a legislature now. And, this legislature that we have right now, I'm so proud of because they are willing to get out there and work. What's your next piece of legislation that you want to, that you want to bring up? That we're So we have a, a bunch of pieces in when it comes to criminal justice reform. I won't go into all of those. The other pieces that we're looking at, we do have a few pieces in ag that is real passionate to me. Ag is a huge uh, moneymaker for Louisiana and families in Louisiana. We, have, we are the Lord, largest real crop state in the, uh, in the country. Uh, so we're going to keep moving forward with some pieces of legislation that, that help us move that. The one piece that we will, which we always bring, is on industrial hemp. Uh, you've probably seen it in the news here mm -hmm. lately that, you know, hey, these, uh, these hemp bills have created an uh, avenue for recreational marijuana. Unfortunately, that's, that's and, I, and I say unfortunately, that's been tagged mm -hmm. the wrong way, and uh, we're going to go in and fix that. There was a breakdown in the department's that needed to oversee these hemp products and they wasn't doing it at, as the, they wasn't doing it the way the legislation said for right. them to do it. So we're gonna go in and correct that, fix those things. But what I did like about it, and we talked about tuning up, we're gonna have a bill that, that looks at that and fixes it. But the one thing that when we had a committee hearing about this, the one thing we hear all the time is we want people to stay in our state and we want our young people who graduate college to stay in our state. Exactly. Looking at that industrial hemp bill, we had 60 business owners, 60 business owners that had started some type of industrial hemp business in the state. We have almost 3,000 businesses across the state that have come into this business. But those 60 that showed up at this meeting, the one thing that stood out to me was we had 10 business owners out of 60 that had left the state with their family and were living off 
when this bill passed in 2019, they decided to come back to the state of Louisiana. Love it. They opened their own business. They had their kids in college. Mm -hmm. They had their kids in schools. They're running their businesses. The other thing was young people who had graduated college. We had 10 young people in that committee hearing testify that, look, because of the 2019 law, when I graduated, I stayed here. Mm -hmm. I stayed here and invested in Louisiana. I took my graduation money and put it into a business that I thought was going to be successful. Look, a lot of those kids that did that, they made over a million dollars their first year in industrial hemp. Amazing. Huge. Huge. And all it took was just listening to some, some the, listening to what's going on in the public. It took, it took what the public wanted to hear. It took the federal form bill, and we put regulations on it that made it um, uh, a more, a more uh, what's the word I'm looking for? More opportunity. Yeah, yeah. More opportunity. More attainable, yeah. So we did that, and that is huge for our state. We want those young people staying here. We want those people and families having a business here that they can be successful with. So we're going to go in. We're going to have a bill that's going to address the, the department side of that and clean that up some. Um, I think you're going to see a lot of bills this year when it comes to uh, fentanyl and the issues that we're having with it. That's going to be part of our uh, criminal justice package, package, and I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna see a few things when it comes to education that'll stand out. So, well, well it sounds to me like you're, you're covering all the bases, all the, all the corners, and this is a fiscal session, so you're covering a whole lot of stuff that's non-fiscal right there off the top, and then there's gonna be a whole bunch of new uh, fiscal uh, legislation. You're gonna see a, a whole new uh, form of tax reform bills coming in that you're gonna see. Uh, I know the committees had met. We put together a task force to look at what what the state wanted mm -hmm. and what the people of Louisiana wanted. You're going to see um, people coming in with um, with just, you know, back in the day when we first got in here in 2020, you had a lot of um, uh, vaccine-type bills that we're going to go in and look at as well, try to clean that up some so that if we happen to have another crisis like we did before, we can we can monitor it better. We can do it better than we did. Look, when you when you get caught up in a situation that's totally new, you're gonna have those surprises that hey, look, we didn't have legislation to address that. We didn't have laws on the book to address it. So you're gonna try to find, find ways so to fix it, fix gonna, it from the fix what happened, and right. lay lay some groundwork so that it won't happen again in the future. I think I think we can do that, and I think we have legislators that are committed to doing that. I love this. And the other thing I like here, and I'm, and I don't want to ask you what kind of tax reform because I don't think that's your job right now. I think your job right now is to listen to what all the legislators are bringing together and your job is, is to help formulate the best puzzle or put them all those pieces to make the best finished Absolutely. puzzle together. And so and it sounds to me like you're going to be doing that. Is there anything you have an eye on or anything that you're trying to... Look, I think the one thing that I hear most about is criminal justice type reform and what we're going to do as far as the budget. If you look at the budget, Ziza Rang and Stuart Bishop are my two money chairmen who do a fantastic job with both of those bills. Uh, I think appropriation starts meeting today, mm -hmm. looking at departments and seeing where we are. And I think you're going to see another good session when it comes to those two bills that um, are conservative, mm -hmm. as always, and spending the money wisely of the state making sure that we put one-time money into one-time expenses and putting reoccurring dollars where they need to be done. Uh, I think those are the two big things that we focused on in the past and working with the Senate and having that relationship, I think we've accomplished a lot. I think that's key to point out. You just now said it, said it perfectly, Speaker, about, about putting one-time dollars where, you know, in one-time expenses and recurring and recurring and not mix up the two because okay. we got a billion dollar surplus Right now, it's going to be in, a, in, a, in a, a shortfall next year. Was it next year? That's right. It's like right around the corner. We already see it coming. Right around the corner. So let, let, let's hope that all the other legislators bring good legislation to you, that you can piece it together to create the right puzzle yeah. for Louisiana. And look, with those one-time expenses over the past uh, three years, we have taken those dollars and put them in shovel-ready projects. You're going to start seeing a lot of projects around the state hopefully that we can find construction crews to come in and do it because we have a lot of dollars that are ready to go to work. We just need those people to go to work and start doing it. So 
I know uh, DOTD, I know uh, CPRA, I know Department of Natural Resources. All of these departments are looking at these jobs and they're sitting there and they're looking to get a contract signed with the contractor to be able to get roads done, to be able to get bridges done, to be able to get uh, coastal uh, restoration done. So these are, these are one-time expenses that I think you're going to see this year some more shovel-ready projects get moved to the top of the list to be able to get done and people in Louisiana will see progress. And that's what they've been wanting to see. So. I love it. Any final words before we, we close out here? No, look, I appreciate you and what you do and, and your show is fantastic. I think uh, you traveling around and meeting, I appreciate you coming uh, to uh, my, my pleasure. district today to be able to meet with me. And uh, I know the people in my district look forward to being able to see shows like this that talk about the positive issues. Yeah, I, 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 I want to get not only positive, but when we talk about issues, it doesn't matter with whether people agree or disagree. It's having that conversation because sometimes that conversation creates other results or even better results and that's what I think needs to be had. Absolutely. You look at you look you know, you look at situations around the state and I'm gonna give a plug right here to our girls basketball team. Oh that's right, yeah. You know, she took a group of ladies who had never played together before. Okay. Never played on the same court before and she took them, she molded them and she took them all the way to the final four. That is huge yeah. when you get people to work together as a team and I think Look, I'm not comparing myself to Kim Mulkey <laughs> by no means because I could never be what she is. But I can tell you right now, to bring people together and to work together is a huge accomplishment across the board. Whether you're Republican or Democrat, whether you're uh, uh, independent, it doesn't matter. Sh having those people work together gets us to where we need to be in the next step. Well, I think just the fact to point out that, that, that bringing people together is what's on your mind and striving to have that same type of leadership skills that Kim Mulkey had you know, and, and do what she's doing is something that you're striving to do for the legislative session this year. Hey, look, she's a, she's a, she's a rock star when it comes to it. And uh, the, only, the only thing I will say is good luck in Dallas. Uh, I'm going to try to get up there to be able to see them win a national championship this year. I'm looking forward to some rock and roll in the legislative session this year. Absolutely. <laughs> Speaker, thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate thank it. You. Everybody else, thank you so much for watching the interview. Please share the interview with other people that you think want to know more about what's happened in the legislative session because I think that the eyes here on this next session are going to be important for the state of Louisiana wherever we go. Thank you so much and have a great day.